Elaine Harding. Welcome to my blog .com. As Halloween isn't big here in the UK, I didn't see the point of a long lead-in time to Halloween. Um, Halloween is on 31st October, so I thought it would be quite nice to do a short series featuring some Halloween projects every Friday until Halloween is upon us. And these will be called Fright Fridays. So for my first Fright Friday project, I'm going to be using this set called A Little Something. Uh, and it can you can buy them separately or you can buy them as a bundle. Well, I bought it as a bundle to save myself 15%. And it makes a lovely square pillow box. And these are the little extra dies you get with it. So... Um, you can use it for Christmas as well as autumn and of course Halloween. I'll quickly run through how to make your basic pillow box. You will need two sheets of cardstock. You can cut two at one time to save yourself time. With the cut edge face down, you need a magnetic platform. Your base cutting plate. Place your cardstock on top, followed by your die and your top cutting plate. And I'll run this through the big shot off so camera. At this stage, if you wish to have a little aperture, you can. So just decide on which you prefer, whether the small one or the bigger one. I'll choose the bigger one and place it on one of the sheets. And I would like to have the little pumpkin cut out as well. So I'll place them both on here on top of my magnetic platform. So now I've cut my apertures and the little pumpkins. I could save those for another project. I don't necessarily want those for this one. And then next thing we do is just burnish all the fold lines. Same with this. Put some tear and tape on the sides. Make sure you go right to the end and and if you go over all you have to do is just fold it back. Okay and do the same for this. You have to make sure that it goes all the way to the end in the right in the corners. And then just fold back the surplus. Okay. Now, if you want um, the pumpkins uh, to show, actually, what you could do is put a piece of coloured cardstock there in the bottom. But if you're not fast, and I'm not because I think the sweets will um, show through then all you have to do is marry this side up with the bottom of that side and then fold that down and there you have your basic box now it's a bit if you want the box to stay in shape, then it's best to, to close it so that so that these two um, 
interlock with each other. So it's a bit, it's easier just to do it like that. And if you have something in there, it will probably keep its shape. But if not, then you can just interlock it and it will keep it puffy. Oops. Okay, so that's the basic construction. The pièce de résistance is really this. Um, I found these Milky Bar Ghost Chockies uh, at my local store. The Halloween sweets aren't quite on the shelves yet. Um, but when I saw these, I just grabbed a couple so that I could make this project for you. The other materials you'll need is extra large wide oval punch, the curvy corner punch. Uh, you'll need the archival basic black ink, um, a block B for your stamps. You need to cut a sheet of Tangelo twist at two and a half inches by the A4 length. Uh, in European size that would be about 11 and three quarter inches by um, two and a half inches and in centimeters that's 6.4 by 29.7 centimeters. You also need a square piece of basic black cardstock and this has been cut at three and three quarter inches square which is 9.5 centimetres square. Some scraps of Tangelo Twist, Whisper White, Basic Black and Basic Black glim Glimmer Paper. This black glimmer paper is new in our autumn winter catalogue. It comes in a pack of two sheets uh, which measure 12 inches by 12 inches and in centimetres that's 30.5 by 30.5 centimeters. First we'll need our scoreboard and we need to score the Tangelo twist piece at with the long side on top at four and seven eighth inches and at six and three quarter inches and in centimeters that is 12.4 by 17.2 centimeters. We want to cut up to the second score line on both sides I've gone away and drawn it with a white chalk marker so you can see it better so this three and um, three quarter piece of cardstock you need to cut to the second score line and then on the opposite side you do the same then you turn it 90 degrees and the bits on the end you want to cut those off <coughs> to give you that shape and then you need to cut this bit off this little square here And it really doesn't matter if you see the white chalk marks because you're not going to see it anyway. So <clears throat> now that's the shape you end up with. Now we burnish the lines. And just pop some tear and tape on the ends flap here. I'm going to use my scissors because I've got 
I'm starting to develop arthritis or well I've been diagnosed as having arthritis and um, it's not been much fun actually so I've got problems with my thumb and my little joint <clears throat> Now we're ready to burnish the lines on the Tangelo twist bit and we'll need our curvy corner punch. There's actually a groove there which will show you which is the middle. So what I'll do is a pencil mark if I can um, get my ruler. Um, find my centre if I draw a line right down the middle it's on the inside so you won't see it but it will just make it a heck of a lot easier for punching. Um, you can find the centre on your pencil mark and then punch it and do the same for the other side. So once you've done that you can corner round it, you can put the two pieces together Flip it over now you're ready to put your uh, base in so all you have to do is just as though you're making a box fold that in use glue dot For the tabs dot on there just on the flaps take the protective film off those together and then there's a gap there for you to put your finger in to secure it and then you can pop that on top of your base I need to do a bit of stamping now maybe I should have done the stamping before I put that on just too impatient um, I'm going to be using the Archival Stampin' Up pad. This is new uh, in the Autumn Winter Catalogue, or was it a new, new annual catalogue? I can't remember. Um, but this ink, ink, Archival Ink, has got a linen felt pad on it rather than the sponge. And it doesn't matter which way up you have it. Yes, it is better that you stamp it first before you put the base on. Right, <clears throat> so now I'll use my uh, wide oval punch. And I've punched out a piece with a post-it note because then I can know precisely where uh, I need to punch my aperture. Okay, let's see where this is going to fit. Is his head going to pop through? that's about right and then if you pop your punch in you know exactly where to punch so you eliminate the guesswork basically 
and then we need to put some tape on here to stick the little treat down. There you go. Cut a piece about 10 inches, that's 25.5 centimeters. Thread it through. Bring back up archival ink. Ooh. A wide oval punch. I'll use the thick end, the brush tip end, to colour that in. I'll use the Tangelo twist oval that was left over. Punch out some glimmer paper. Sponge dauber to just sponge the edges of this card. And I'm going to punch a hole in the middle of the glimmer paper and you'll see why in a minute. I'm just going to glue the back of that to the pump, uh, the tangelo twist piece and then pop a dimensional in that hole because it's sometimes not very easy to um, adhere dimensionals onto the glimmer paper. It comes, it comes off after a while. So I found a way around it and then last of all Bit of Tombow glue there and then pop that onto your cheat pouch and voila it's all done so I hope you've enjoyed today's uh, little Halloween project and pop back um, next Friday for another Halloween project and in the meantime don't forget I have a 12 week countdown to Christmas series episode 4 next week. Thanks for watching and I'll be back soon.